in commercial finance uh, that we call pipeline financing. Financing for fast growing companies uh, is increasingly based not on, finance, on physical assets or receivables, but on the analysis of the sales pipeline itself. And the uh, proof of that is that there are specialist financial institutions appearing in the US right now. Uh, in Europe, we see credit risk analysis specialists moving up the sales cycle towards the sales pipeline itself. And we also see analysis and pricing methods for, this, for these special loans adapting. So really, the sales pipeline is becoming very similar to a financial portfolio, portfolio of financial assets that you can analyze and finance. This is a significant opportunity for technology enablers. Right now, um, CRM software generalists are not focused on that at all. The BI approach is not very appropriate. We don't see BI software on trading floors. Finding risk in a financial portfolio is a very specific task. And there are very relevant uh, science out there ready to be applied in behavioral economics or financial theory. So the question is, who will be the market of, of, or the murex of that new market? We think we are in a good position for that. So Salesforce today is a SaaS application uh, that integrates with Google Apps, Highrise, and Salesforce that provides sales pipeline visualization, analysis, and forecasting with a risk management twist. Next. So what is that twist? Well, we can measure, assess the economic data quality of the sales pipeline as opposed to the administrative data quality. We're not interested in stuff like uh, duplicates or the right format of telephone numbers. Looking at the sales pipeline, we can identify at-risk opportunities based on their behavior. We can also identify priority stages and not stags in the sales process. So stages that people should focus on in order to make their number. And we provide database forecasts that are more accurate than the forecasts that are used by 90% of the companies out there. Uh, we've had significant traction since last year. We're currently gaining over 100 users a month. Uh, we've had one installation a day for the high-rise version of SaySpeak. For the Salesforce version, we've received Salesforce's Customer Choice Award for Analytics at the beginning of the year. And we also have very nice plans. Uh, this is based on concrete benefits that we are already providing, uh, an improvement in data quality, uh, gains in forecast accuracy, also based on the proprietary technology that we have developed, and that's patentable. Coming up next for us uh, is uh, pipeline credit worthiness assessment, grading opportunities like you grade financial assets, like you grade bonds and letting sales managers and sales operations managers adjust the risk return profile of their sales pipeline. So really, sales analysis today is where financial analysis was in the 70s. It's very ad hoc, and it's ready for the application of uh, science and computing power. Uh, these are the, the main opportunities for us. We are not very active in the US. We'd like to be there because this is the main market for us. Uh, we are not investing in sales and marketing at all, so there's a huge upside for us there. And we have a very sexy roadmap that we'd like to accelerate. So today we're looking for the right financial partner for us. Next. That partner looks like this. Uh, quantitative analysis is very important, as well as an understanding of the SaaS business model. Uh, that's it. You can find me at the booth just outside this area available for questions. So what do you what do you think you owe your success to? It seems like you've had an increase in, in user adoption in the past couple of months. What do you think uh, was the game changer for you? I think it's mainly adding more and more features that are more and more relevant. So that enables us to reach larger accounts than we were able like 18 months ago. Uh, features like uh, the features that I mentioned here, like um, analyzing the priorities in the sales pipeline, providing improved forecast accuracy, etc. 
it, it seems like a, it seems like the biggest thing is that most people using a CRM today, which is more or less everyone is using a CRM one or the other, is lack of awareness about the opportunity of doing this. So how do you fight that education barrier? I think most people know that their forecasts are mainly based on judgments and thus uh, very sensitive to potential biases in the psychology of sales managers and, and sales reps. Uh, but often they are not aware that an alternative exists. Uh, when we install SalesSpeak, right away we can, uh, we can uh, provide this improved forecast accuracy. And this is when people realize that there is another way to do it and that, and that it's more efficient. Awesome. Great. Well, um, thank you very much for coming and go buy and see Oh, one question. What do you want? Yeah, I'll come. I'll bring this to you. Hey, uh, you're showing some pretty impressive numbers. Can you tell us a bit more about your forecasting technology? What is it based on? And, uh, Okay, it's an interesting question. So the problem with B2B is very often you don't have the large sales volumes, the tens of thousands of data points that are required for statistical forecasting. So you have to find alternatives. The traditional alternative is, as I just said, relying on judgments. What we do is that we analyze everything that goes on in the sales pipeline, every transition from one stage to another, every change in the amount, closing date, closing probability, and that multiplies the number of data points that we can use for forecasting. Yeah, of course it's automated, yeah. So what are the rules that you use for that? What are the rules? What are the rules for the forecast? What do you mean the rules? I mean, you said that it's not a bit of data points, so that's a good statistic. So you need to get your own like model. Yes, um, this is mainly machine learning. So we don't, we don't come to a sales pipeline with a predefined notion of what we're going to find. But we use machine learning to understand the past patterns of the pipeline and use that for forecasting. Awesome, thank you very much. Let's give a round of applause.